All right, guys, I've got a uh, 15 plus 10 unrated game. Uh, my opponent's rated 10 10, so just over 1,000. And I'm going to play this um, check pits if I can. I'm expecting him to take the center, and then I. Do I play the knight there? Yeah, if the knight, if the pawn comes forward, I can capture. Then if pawn takes, queen takes queen, king loses castling rights, and then my knight can run away. So he can't really advance e5. All right. Now, I don't know any theory here at all. Okay, so the knight's defending this pawn. The queen's defending this pawn. I've given up the center. I can't play e5 again because pawn takes and I can't recapture. So, but it, still we have the issue with that. He can't push it either. So, let's play c6. The idea is of maybe bringing the queen here. It's in line with the king, it would pin the knight, and then this pawn is actually hanging. Okay. So he's gone for a big old centre. Now if he pushes this central pawn, I can actually put my knight here safely, because this knight is pinned. He'd probably have to block with the bishop. Okay, now he's defending the pawn a second time, which is a good move. This pawn is actually undefended. So I could drop my queen back down to here and have a look at this pawn. I'm breaking all the rules here. Just move my queen twice. So not only have I brought my queen out early in the game, I've now moved her a second time. But on the plus side, I've got my coffee. I've given up the whole centre. I mean, my pawns have these squares. Okay, so he's defended the pawn. This is this is decent play. Okay, let's bring out the bishop and pin this knight. All right, so now, if I take... However he recaptures, this pawn is mine, yeah? However, he's going for this huge centre, and his pawns are all messed up on the king side, so he's going to have to castle this way. So my question now needs to be, how much do I want to keep this... Uh, bishop. We don't have any deadlock pawns. All the pawns are free right now to move forward, which means it's a better game for bishops. Now, I would worry about this and then g4, giving him the biggest centre you've ever seen, and then maybe g5 would fork my bishop and knight. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the capture here and see if I can grab this free pawn. Okay, if I take the pawn, do we have to be concerned? Not right now. Let's take the pawn. Okay. So I have a safe square there. I think that's my only option. And now looking at an undefended pawn here and the rook. Okay, so I'm going to capture. So he's attacking my knight, but I have a greater threat. I can capture the knight with check or the rook with check. And how does he save both? The answer is he doesn't. Okay, so I have the option to capture the knight. The knight's still hanging, right? So here is the opportunity possibly for an in-between move. For example, I could capture the pawn. Um, I'd like to attack something I take the knight now, he takes the knight, I've got queen takes down the diagonal. That could be interesting. And then I've, I'm actually two pawns up. I'm two pawns up already. Okay, let's do that. See if we can go three knights up, three pawns. Okay, there we go, queen's doing a great job here. Right, so, rook b1, looking at an undefended pawn. The obvious move would be b6, or even b5. That's hanging. That's my goldfish.
push the pawn. There's no, no reason to give it up. And it just gains a bit more control. So these are all squares in my own half, though. So I think at some point... See, look at the state of my opponent's pawns, right? One, two, three, four, five. These are isolated. Now, surely that's just a blunder of a piece. Okay, maybe what he's trying to do is actually deflect my knight away from the defense of c6. So that the queen can capture on c6. And that comes with a fork on king and rook. So it's a clever little move. I'm inclined to play d5, which leaves this bishop truly hanging. Plus it grabs some control in the center and it limits the queen's movement as well. Clever little move that, I like that. Ooh! Ooh! Nice! Well, 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 the rook is dead. That pawn's still defended by the knight. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to get my um, bishop out, get castled, and see if I can't trap this bishop and regain some material. So bishop could come here, not there. That's a possibility. Let's make that orange. So that's good, good, maybe good. <sighs> okay. I don't want to put my bishop here, because if takes, takes, rook takes, knight. So that's out of the question. So we're down to kind of three. This is okay, but it's not a defended square. But I think it looks best. All in all. Also defends the knight. Oh, that's a very clever move. Let's look at that again. Yeah, so I missed that threat completely. Absolutely right. So what I should have maybe have done is move my knight and save the rook. Hmm. Okay, my first instinct is to play c5 and build a bit of a nice structure there. What's he trying to do with this move? Does he want to come here? Then I can just play c5. Okay, let's castle. Well, you're not gonna barrage down there because the first rook capture, pawn takes. You can also play knight d7. Ah, no, because that undefends this pawn, so. What do I do? Shall I push the pawn? And then move the knight? If I push the pawn, then move the knight there. The bishop actually has this square there. Um, bishop has that square anyway, and currently the knight's the only defender of that, so. I'm just inclined to push, I think. This is my advantage. My advantage is I have eight pawns. If I push, bishop takes, I've got bishop takes. Let's do that. Opponents from Vietnam. Screen name Warsaw Pact. So the imbalances are really coming into play here. I'm down slightly in material. I'm down a rook for three pawns. So he's got two rooks, so his advantage is extra rook. All right, so really what he wants to be doing is using these rooks as a team to try and break through that way. My advantage is I have three extra pawns, and they are these three, right? Every, every other pawn has a a counterpart, right? Um, so 
So what I want to do is I want to use my pawn advantage to try and crush up the board, gain space. And space means, generally, control of squares in my opponent's half of the board. Right now I'm controlling a few, the queen's controlling them, bishops potentially controlling them. Okay, I'm just going to grab it back. Okay, so he's just given up a bishop for two pawns. These pawns are still pretty strong, and now he only has a dark squared bishop remaining on the board. Um, however, I've got this pawn now, yeah? Bishop takes, queen takes, and material is equal. I feel relatively secure, and we are now threatening to open up the king. So now I'm down the exchange, but I'm up two pawns. Right, I've got this one and I've got the B pawn. Plus my king is safer than my opponent's king. Okay, this would force an exchange of queens. However, it would also isolate one of my pawns. So what I kind of like to do is come up to these pawns, I think. Not worried about the safety of this, it's defended twice. Can't get to these squares where my queen would be defended by the knight, therefore we could exchange queens um, without breaking my pawn structure. I'm just kind of inclined to... I don't know. So basically, if I come here, what, what can he do? He has to defend two pawns. He might put his queen there. Then maybe I'll just come back down here. Let's try that. At least make him think. Put the question to my opponent. I'm attacking two pawns, both undefended. Rook there does defend. Oh, queen's actually defending that one. Okay, what's he planning here? He wants to play rook here. Rook here. And if I take with my rook, he's got this. Check there, checkmate, okay? However, currently my queen is guarding that square. So I think it's probably time to engage my knight, maybe knight round here. Knight can look at those pawns. Means this pawn is undefended right now. Okay, he can't now drop his rook down to there. This guy's playing really well. Okay, now he's attacking my queen. But my queen needs to defend this square. Because the other option is, rook comes down here. Rook takes, king recaptures, still checkmate. Very good play. Now I've got knight here, actually. Attacks the queen. That's a thought. Oh, but it's also pinned. So either of these pawns advances. Then I'll just take the queen. I take the queen, he takes my own. Yeah, no. So that's not that's not really a threat. I take the queen, rook takes my queen. Then rook to here to defend this pawn, or even a5. So I need to get out of this pin as soon as I can. Okay. So it's an exchange of queens. All right, there we go. Now the knight's defending that pawn. I'm still two pawns up for the exchange. So in material terms, we're kind of equal. <clears throat> I think I want to get my rook to this square. So a very important thing when you get into an ending like this is to think about the coordination, how you, how you can keep all of your pawns defended. Okay, so it's attacking my knight. Can't go there, can't go there, can't go there, can't go there, can't go there. That leaves two options. Um, the rook can't actually attack this pawn right now. So I'm thinking maybe knight here and maybe to there, something like that. Or knight here. Let's 
two knight there, at least it's on a defended square. Still plan to put my rook here. Okay, that's fine. You've only got one attacker. And actually, this rook is now completely stuck. So if I could attack that rook with my knight, that would be awesome, but I can't. Ooh! You devil! Okay, now, knight here defends my rook. This guy's finding some awesome moves. Look at that. Took advantage of the pin. Okay, rook to there. Wow, okay. Let's come up to this pawn. He can't... He can take there. <laughs> he can. And of course he does. Because he's playing smart. Because my king is in a back rank mate position. Should push a pawn. Is he going to defend that pawn? I don't, don't know how he can. Okay. Wow. Okay, if he takes my rook, it's checkmate. So, that I can't take him because it's checkmate in two. So I have to move. I can't cover these squares with my knight because that pawn's pushed. This guy's playing simply too well. But fell into a fork. Now if he drops that rook down, I take it. If he drops that rook down, I take it. We may have a lifeline, boys and girls. Okay. Now I need an escape square. I need to go after these pawns. So right now my advantage is I've got an extra pawn on the king side. His advantage is two extra pawns on the queen side. Okay, now I need an escape square. If he pushes this, I'll probably just lift my rook to prevent the pawn coming any further forward. Now, let's say this guy comes all the way to here. I capture. He drops his rook. I think we'll be all right. I mean, you can give check, I just hide. He's playing all the right moves. So, my king wants to come across here now. This, this guy is not playing like a 1000. Okay, now he wants to come here. Has to go there. Right, and now... I need to press my advantage. I need to push my pawns up. Okay, he wants to do that. I get it. Can't play there or there now. He can push the pawn forward, in which case I'll probably come here. And this king will have to go there to defend the pawn. What a good game. Yep. Can't push the pawn because I take the rook. Uh, the rook's okay. Oh, I can't grab that either. He's playing like a demon. So if I take that, king takes. I can't take the rook because the king's defending the rook as well. Wow. Okay, let's come back here. I should come back here actually, defend that pawn. Can't push the pawn because I take the rook. Nothing to do. I think this guy's playing with like 95% accuracy. There takes. Ah, uh, now I can't get his rook. Now that's a resignable game, but I'm going to look at the. Uh, have to resign that. 
I'm going to I'm going to look at the uh, analysis on that. It's interesting as well because I'm trying a new opening, so I get to learn from that. 84 accuracy. He made one blunder, which was. Yeah, and then the next move. Yeah, okay, so one blunder. Other than that, what a game. Blunder and three mistakes, three inaccuracies. That was terrific. Well, well played. Tell you what, though, I'm glad that was unrated. So I've lost like 10 rating points for that one. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to the beginning and see where I normal. Okay, and now c six. Right, so good book move, book move. Right, so we are in the check pits right now. Interesting, interesting. And that's the last book move. So we have followed book pretty well. Queen b six is good. So you're threatening to win material. What was the best move there? Okay, contest the center. Something I forgot to do and neglected to do. Okay, very interesting game. Well played Warsaw Pact. Um, very impressive, very impressive play. And lots of little interesting tactics in there for you guys as well. Hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. See you soon.